What's going on everybody? Michael Silva here. You're watching the Daily Stock Market Brief show. Today's episode is a weekly recap. So we're going to recap the week, look at some longer term charts and get a good idea as to what to expect going into next week. Next week, just so you know, is the last week of the quarter. So it's going to be very difficult to navigate. Let's just hop right into the show. All right, everybody, welcome back. Now, if you haven't watched the last episode, I talked about growth versus value and how it seems like we're coming into a period of time where value will be outperforming some of the growth stocks. Um, so I'm not going to dig too much into this chart, but if you do, if you did watch that episode or didn't watch that episode, go back and watch it because I do talk about this rate of change right here. Now, a couple other things that I want to add into it is this, the TNX on the daily time frame. This is still within this channel, this consolidation, potentially a bullish consolidation. What makes it bullish? Well, you just need to look to the left of the chart and notice that the trend has been up. Okay. So since August, it's been trending up. So typically what you see with these type of patterns is you see a continuation at some point. Now it could just hold within this channel for a long period of time, but we did see some strength on the last trading day of the week. Um, so it's something to be mindful of. We have the uh, price percent oscillator also crossing up here, okay? So if this does break out, this is gonna put more pressure on the tech stocks that we've uh, seen previously. We've seen that on big run-ups or ramp-ups, it puts a lot of pressure on this these growth mega cap names. Now, uh, what it does do good for is actually the banks and financials, and we did see financials do somewhat, uh, somewhat well um, going into the end of the week last week. And there, we'll talk more about that on, in, in, other, in other episodes, but it was getting a lot of weakness as it was pulling into a monthly 5 EMA, which we talked about in previous episodes. Um, let's look at the TLH here. We did break out of this inverse head and shoulders. The target was perfectly hit. Now we're seeing some weakness coming into it. This could be potentially a back test and then head higher. That's always a possibility, but the overall trend is still, you know, it's swimming up a river. Right, you have the 200 overhead. We did recapture the 100, and that's still sloping down. We have a shorter term trade trend. The 20 day in the, um, is is sloping up, and the 50 day is relatively flat to trying to trying to turn up here. So we'll we'll continue to monitor to see what plays out here. Uh, I will notice that the price percent oscillator does look like it's going to be crossing over to bearish. It is still above zero though, but that is not a great sign when that crosses over and the RSI falls below 50. That'd be a little bit more bearish than anything. Now, if I look at um, the SPIP over GOVT, which is looking at tips over the treasury. Now, uh, it, it, without getting in too much detail with this, I'm just going to kind of give you an idea of what this would mean. Well, first off, last week, this was on its way down. It was, it was heading down, which would really make me think that this would, the market's saying, okay, we, we're actually believing this transitory environment. Okay. Inflation is transitory. However, this last week, it, it turned up pretty significantly, almost erasing most of what took place the, pr the prior week. And that, to me, looks like also a bullish consolidation here uh, on this specific ratio. And you can draw patterns on ratios. They work wonderfully. Um, so if this does want to not hold his resistance and start breaking out, then I think that, that the narrative from being, oh, you know, it is transitory if it heads lower, I think that this would create more inflationary pressures and kind of change the tune of the you know the hawkish Fed, which we saw the Fed walk back a lot of those those comments uh, the prior week. Now the price percent oscillator on this ratio too is about to cross up bullishly. So if this starts breaking out, perhaps that whole transitory theme, um, you know, and people actually believing that will uh, believe it less if this continues pressing higher. Now, if we look at the US dollar still consolidating, this could be very well a bull flag and it breaks out. So we're going to continue to monitor that. If this does break out, I think we're going to continue to see pressure here on gold and uh, uh, silver would be the ones to watch out for there. You can see the big pull to the downside really matches the big pull here to the upside in the dollar. So it put a lot of pressure on the precious metals. Um, this is could be potentially flagging right here. I'm not going to be a buyer at this specific time. I would like to see it head a little bit lower to be a buyer. And I did talk about that on a previous episode I posted on, I think last Sunday, uh, energy or sorry, not energy oil. Oil 
has reached a another high point this week, a very strong week, up 3.87% with a high at 74.25. Um, this thing just keeps trucking along. The price percent oscillator, again, looks like Ashley wants to start curling up and um, become more bullish. We do have some resistance overhead at about 77.5, so we'll continue to see, but overall, just very, very bullish trend here. Um, if we look at consumer staples over the S&P 500, we're, we're, this is to more look at, okay, um, should we, are, are traders going into a more defensive stance? Um, and just looking at this ratio, it's a, it's a solid no, um, because you can see that the ratio clicked down to make another, another low point, you know, a lower low, which is never bullish, a lower low um, and lower highs would be bearish. So the defensiveness here, it, it seems like it's more, where the markets are more bullish in nature. However, okay, I want to point something out. If you've been watching this show for quite some time, you know that when it came down to this level with the energy XLE over the SPY, I was also calling out in, I think it was October of last year, that energy, it looked just like this. And we had this positive divergence on the RSI. I was saying that, okay, you know, when this starts when this um, starts resolving itself and it starts heading higher, we got to look for energy positions because it's going to be one of the top performing sectors. Uh, now, not to say consumer staples will be, um, but what I am looking at here is a lower low, but it could have been undercutting this and then potentially curling back up. We do have that positive divergence building on the RSI right now. As the RSI got back above 30, the price percent oscillator, you can see a very subtle curl right here. So perhaps uh, perhaps that it, I mean, this is just something that we need to watch um, because if it does get overextended, we have the positive divergence and we start seeing strength in this ratio, that could signal that the market is getting a little bit defensive. Let's look at the S&P 500 and break down to the other indices. Weekly time frame, very strong week, up 2.74%. Very hard to be bearish when everything is so bullish. Be mindful, quarter end, we can have some weird shakes. We can have some extreme melt ups. There's all kinds of things that can happen on the end of balance or uh, when the quarter kind of rebalances. Now, from a daily perspective, um, you can see here, we broke out of this consolidation. It is heading higher, all in bullish context. We're a little bit disconnected from the five EMA, uh, which you know sometimes we'll re-tag that. But any pullback here, I would, would imagine that we're gonna be getting bought back and you can continue to see this this rally take place um, just given the current context and trend and seasonality on top of that now pay attention on all these indices the price percent oscillator is crossing over to be bullish okay so that is a positive sign too as well uh, from the 15 minute perspective the five day moving average is inclining we're gonna like i said a little bit extended on this move so perhaps we digest some gains nothing to be scared of i think those dips will be bought but also keep in mind that quarter balance re can, it can add some weird shakes to the market. Um, as far as this uh, percent of stocks above the 50 and the 200, negative divergence still at play here. But what we were discussing last um, episode or last week was the possibility of this shooting up high to add um, more momentum and, and kind of breadth to this move on the S&P 500 to add to that seasonality script. And we're starting to see that, you know, really start to crank up here, which is still relatively a low reading because this thing can get pretty extended and get extended fast. We can, we've can we seen it in the 90s, right? We've seen it there plenty of times. And when it gets really extended, then, then we'll start having to kind of back off a little bit. But as it stands right now, it's pointing straight up like it wants to continue this trend. Also to note, the RSI, remember, we were getting overbought here. We're starting to see it kind of come up here on the BP charts as the market's pressing higher. We did point out these two other circles. We had a very similar type action where then it quickly then uh, shortly after reversed to make another lower low. So that's still in the books. But as it stands right now, I mean, everything is um, everything is pointing to really, really bullish here. Uh, okay, so let's look at the cues on the weekly. Now, one thing I want to point out, this is breaking out of this rising wedge here. So that is bullish, right? We have a little bit of diverging volume. So the conviction this last week of volume was rather light. Um, and we're right here within this consolidation pattern with the volatility index for the NASDAQ. So we're looking at the VXN there. Um, it could get, to me, this is getting a little overextended of a move and we'll probably need to take a break and we'll see that here on the lower charts. However, this is still very, very bullish. And if I were to draw a horizontal line and this was an ascending triangle, um, and we're looking at the NDX, this could very well propel the NDX to 16,000 uh, rather quickly, to be to be quite honest. So um, something to also be mindful of. Now, if you look at the cues on the daily time frame, right, 
a little bit of weakness on that day, but we're still above the 20, a little, a little overextended from it, above the 50, above the 100, and above the 200. Okay, the price percent oscillator looks like it's flattening out to curling down slightly here as the RSI got a little overextended. Not not overextended by any means. It's it's still in bullish context, but right around that 70 marker, you know, it's done that before and then it gives back. It or digests and it came right over here, right? It gave back right over here. It gave back a little bit or digested. This move from down here at 315 is pretty vertical move. So what you'd want to see would be some digestion. That would make sense to me. Now, there's a couple things that can take place, right? Either either price can digest, so it can just take a quick hit to the downside, or time. And I mean, I would I, I don't think it's gonna really digest in price significantly at this particular point in time, just looking at various indicators, but perhaps it might take a little bit more time to proceed its uptrend. And that would be actually very healthy to see. Uh, from a 15 minute perspective, this could be a, you know, it could be flagging right here, a falling wedge. Um, five day moving average is inclining. We have a little bit of gap here. So it's overall still in uh, short term, very, very bullish context right here uh, based on that 15 minute chart. If you look at the semiconductors on the weekly time frame, also ascending triangle, this can propel it up significantly if we start breaking above. I, I would be very patient with a break above and get some confirmation, but this could propel us, you know, from 220 to 260. So we're talking you know, 40 points there. If we start breaking out, that can bring us to around 300 on the SMH ETF. If you look at the SMH uh, ETF on the daily time frame, you can also see here these last four or five trading days is a very, very strong move here. The price percent oscillator looks like it wants to cross over to become bullish, but perhaps we kind of just hang out a little bit more before breaking up. All right, we've seen some strong moves to it and then it has to digest and then come back down a little bit. So this has been consolidating here rather nicely, uh, just very choppy. So, you know, a couple of more, more days within this um, could really set us up for just an amazing July um, uh, rally based off that seasonality script. And then if you look at the BP and the X chart, this one is cranking up still. This is one of the higher readings on the RSI versus the other indices. And you can see here, it's, you know, I would, I would be a little bit more... Uh, it still looks like it has room to go is what I want to say. It looks like it can reach up to those 70s. When it gets up to those levels, then it gets a little bit overextended. So it suggests to me that there is still more room for it to run, but just be mindful that it is um, not too far from getting to an overextended reading. It could be very quick too, but we can get there if we get a big gap up tomorrow. We'll see. Dow Jones. Now, Dow Jones had a very strong week, up 3.4%. Now, this is one of the only indices that hasn't made an all-time high, which tells me if it's going to follow the script of everybody else, this could be where the opportunity is at. And right now, yes, you can see a big nasty red candle right into the 20-week moving average in the middle of the Bollinger Bands, and then quickly then recovered it. Uh, this could be due in part by the infrastructure, the good news around the infrastructure bill that came out last week. Price percent oscillator still bearish, uh, so just be mindful of that. Uh, you know, this could be flattening out, turning back up. Uh, that happens during these periods of consolidation. A daily time frame, very quick recovery after this kind of puke fest right here. Felt like a roller coaster right into the 100 day moving average, slightly missed it. And then we just rallied back very quickly. Price percent oscillator, what do you know? It's crossing over. This is this is all bullish things pointing to more bullish behavior, uh, which fits that seasonality script that we've been preparing for. I haven't pressed too hard as of lately because I was hoping that we'd see it a little bit later into July, or sorry, into June, where we'd see a pullback a little bit deeper. This was a nice deep correction, uh, but not, not, I wouldn't call it a correction, but a pullback. Uh, but we didn't really see that in the other indices. So it kind of, it was just a hard week to navigate overall. And it could very well still be shaking up a little bit heading into quarter end. But um, as it stands right now, Everything looks good. Uh, a 15 minute time frame could be a slight rising wedge here. So be mindful of that. It was a strong move. Would be nice to see it digest its gains a little bit. Negative divergence, a couple gaps below us. Those can act as areas of support. Um, gaps don't need to get filled, but but sometimes they can act as magnets and they can get filled and they can also act as levels of support and or resistance depending on where the price is. And if you look at transports, transports has been going sideways. That to me is not a bad sign. This is forming a somewhat of a bottoming pattern, it could be an ascending triangle. And this to me would, you know, if we start breaking out of this, could propel us, you know, from 14.85, it could, you know, a couple hundred points here could bring us up to around, you know, 15.175 rather quickly. And that would be good for transports. There are some really good airline names that I've been seeing that, you know, I'm in one of the airline plays right now. It's been kind of a dud as of recently, but if we start seeing transports get some momentum here, that'd be a good sign. And just based off of this 15 minute chart, you know, 
Moore spends time bottoming out right here and uh, you look at the five-day five, uh, five day moving average, it's starting to flatten out to incline now, which is a good sign. So as the days progress, that could very well send us in a more positive direction for the transports to continue its monster trend that it has been on. And by the way, when I say monster trend, if you look at the quarterly time frame, which we'll get into at quarter end, month end, we'll get a little bit more in depth on some longer term charts. Um, it's, it's very overextended too as well. Uh, Russell 2000. We're going to look at the IWM as the proxy. I redrew this out because, well, one, like this is really amazing. Look at look at how well this performed uh, this week, 4.57%. Now, if we are right about the growth to value play and value is going to see more benefits, IWM might be a very, very good play in some small caps. Why? Well, 20% of the holdings in the IWM is financials, okay? And financials do very well if the yields are rising and we're paying attention to the TNX, right? If that were to break out, that would put some pressure on tech, but it would also, you know, add, you know, as wind to the back of the financial sector. And so that could be a very, very strong play. We just need to be patient and see here um, how it plays out. So IWM on the daily time frame, yeah, this last week of trading, very strong. Might need to take some time to digest its gains here, but look at the price percent oscillator. Looks like it's about to do a bullish crossover here too as well. Not just the price percent oscillator, but also if you look at the MACD, it's doing the same thing. So this all looks very good right here at the upper range of resistance. If we start breaking out, this could propel us significantly further, right? Just look at, if you were to just measure, take a measured move from around 210, to, you know, let's call it 230, yeah, 210 to around 235 there. So you would just basically, what's what's the math here? So yeah, 25 points, okay? So it will go 235, 240, 50, 60, it could propel us to around 260 on the IWM. Not too bad, um, rough math there, fast math. And I have, I, I'd actually have to measure it to see, it could be even from this low point here, so it would actually be potentially a little bit more, um, Let's look at the 15 minute time frame. You can see here on this time frame, you can see what I mean by a little bit overextended. It, you know, it's completely vertical. So if you're buying up here, you know, you can get stuck and it could take some time to digest. But you can see here the five day is starting to incline. It's sharply inclining, which I don't like seeing that all that much because the faster it inclines, you can get moves to the downside and then can start reversing itself quickly. But still, I mean, it's strong from this bounce right here. You want to see this maybe go a little bit sideways to a little bit down, retest these levels here, right at around, you know, 228. And the one thing that you can do to play this is you don't want to really buy it below the 15, the five day moving average. Um, you'd want to do it when it breaks back above. So if you see it kind of pull back down here, maybe bounce like that and then come back down, then you'd want to buy it probably on that breakout where, it, you know, where you'd see that kind of bounce and then bounce through those levels. So, uh, uh, just a little trick there. Um, as far as the BKX goes, financials are very important to watch. Uh, negative divergence here, a uh, rising wedge right here. As you can see, it's been kind of just grinding higher. Now the five-day moving average is starting to incline as well, but I would imagine that we can see some digestion of gains here too. So just be, just be like I said, be, be careful. You don't want to buy at these peaks. You want to see it pull back and then you want to see it come through. So for example, if we did pull back here, then, and then we started seeing some strength come back in, then you'd want to buy that into the strength to help, you know, put wind towards your back on those trades. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you on today's episode. To really just recap, it does really seem like we're moving into an area where we can have some short-term weakness and or time to digest the gains in tech. So my focus going into next week and the weeks to come until things change would be looking at value plays. That's all I got for you, everybody. Have a good day.